College students, how are we? Well, good to see you. As I told you last week, this is going to be a worship night, so I'm not going to be up here, but just a few minutes. I just wanted to kind of close out this series by reading you this powerful text of Scripture. But if you hadn't been here before, we're in a series called Breaking Free, where we're talking about breaking free from the addictions that control us. And so instead of doing the usual recap, I'm just going to refer you to our website. If you missed any of the messages at experiencelifenow.com, you can catch them all there. We've been talking about steps to breaking free. We said the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We want to break free. And there's a number of steps we've gone through, things Jesus uses to help us break free. And I just want to share with you, number five, deny. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then we're going to go back into worshiping Jesus and thanking Him for helping so many of us this semester break free. Mark chapter 5, starting in verse 1, Mark was friends with Peter. Peter was an eyewitness, so Mark's writing all this down. He says this, So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from a cemetery to meet him. This man lived among the burial caves and could no longer be restrained, even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the Spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. Is the demons responding. And then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby. Send us into the pigs, spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man, entered the pigs, and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs. The crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting in the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, no. Go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what he told them. So this guy filled with all these demons. Jesus casts them out. He's like, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to go with you. Jesus said, no, not right now. I want you to go back home, and I want you to tell everybody what I've done for you. And it says, as he told them, they were amazed by what he said. And here's what I'm believing for you tonight, college student, that the story that you could tell of what God has done in your life through this series and this semester could amaze people. God could use your story of what he's done in your life to amaze your friends, to amaze your family members, to amaze your classmates, to amaze your roommates. God wants to use the story that we could tell of breaking free from addiction to amaze people. And so step five is really something you do after you've broken free to kind of stay free. Step five is simply you share what Jesus has done for you, just like he told Legion, the demon-possessed guy. So week one was admit, then we confess, we reconcile, we pursue, and then we share. And like Jesus told him, we go out and we just say, hey, this is what he's done for me. He can do this for you too. And as you're sharing your story of what God's done in your life, hopefully many of you have experienced freedom as a result of what you've heard in God's word through this series. But as you go out and share with others, God's going to use your story to amaze them and they're going to break free. Jesus is the one that's going to help them, but he's going to help them through your story. He's going to give them hope that they can break free. 
So one, you sharing your story helps other people to break free. And two, you sharing your story helps you to stay free. Why? Because as you're helping them break free and you recognize what they're going through and the bondage they're in, you think to yourself, I don't want to go back to that ever again. And as you're sharing with them how you broke free, it reminds you of what it takes to stay free. So as you share, you help others break free. And you stay free because you recognize, hey, as I'm watching what God's doing in that guy's life, I'm sharing with he's done that in mine. I don't want to go back to that ever again. That practical slavery to sin, don't want to go back to that again. So practical challenge, just kind of in conclusion to this series, is why don't you share with some people what God has done in your life this semester? Why don't you think of three people as we worship here for the next little bit, maybe as a friend, classmate, family member, whoever, that you can share with what God has done for you. Maybe think of somebody that needs help breaking, to breaking free from whatever addiction is controlling them and share with them how God has helped you to break free. And then watch God amaze other people through your story. You're like, my story is not a big deal. Oh, it's a big deal. And he wants to use it. And he's going to amaze people through you if you'll share it with other people. And as you do, you'll stay free. You'll help them break free. You'll stay free. And it'll be awesome to see what God does in your life and through your life as you tell others like Legion, about the great things he's done for you. I want to show you one final video of a guy. His name's Colby. He's on our staff, not much older than a lot of you guys. And he shared with us the addiction he struggled with and how God helped him to break free. I'd love to just conclude this series by showing you this video. Take a look. Could you tell us your name and spell it out really quick for us? Yeah, it's Colby McGinnis, C-O-L-B-Y-M-C-G-I-N-N-I-S. I'll never forget the way I felt 20 years ago. I was six years old when my, I realized my parents were going to get a divorce and that my dad was no longer going to be living in our house. After, after my dad left and was no longer living with us, I remember going to bed at nighttime and you know one of the things that I always looked forward to was my dad tucking me in. I remember uh, getting to lay down and, and watch TV with him before I would go to bed and then he would tuck me in and, and I just remember after he left not having that anymore and just uh, crying and crying and crying and my mom just holding me. And, and I just didn't understand why, why would my dad not be here anymore? Why would they be separating? And I uh, just remember being overwhelmed with sadness and, um, and just not f just feeling like something wasn't right. This can't be right. I had really just began to seek out girls to satisfy me. And even as early as elementary school, began to have sexually immoral relationships begin to just jump from one girl to the next, hoping that if I found the right girl, that that would satisfy the void that I'd felt. That led to pornography and, and impure thoughts and lust. And before long, it, it, it had mastered me so much that I only looked at girls as objects to satisfy needs that I had. And it wasn't just physical needs, but emotionally, I thought maybe if I got serious enough with the right girl that that, that would satisfy the emptiness that I felt. But it didn't. For me, I realized that these relationships were never going to satisfy me, that they were fleeting, um, that I would date a girl for, and at first it would be really exciting. and. There would be a lot of it would be a lot of fun and 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 yeah, it felt good to to date another girl. Um, but five to six months into the relationship, I this sounds terrible, but I would just feel bored and I would think that well, I need some somebody else. Maybe I just need to, to go to the next girl because because a new girl will satisfy me. And then five or six months later, I, I would be in the same place of just feeling like I, I'm empty again. I, I'm 
there's got to be something more. I remember the, the summer before my freshman year of college thinking, what, what, what is going to satisfy me? Uh, and it was around that time that I went to a retreat and was around this group of people that loved and followed Jesus. And I, I just remember experiencing the joy that they had. Just as I was around them, they, they were, it didn't matter what was happening. It didn't matter what relation, the way their relationships were going or their circumstances. They were just full of joy. And they, they were living for something day by day with purpose that I knew I didn't have. And I remember just longing for that. I remember thinking, that's what I want. That, that's what I've been searching for my whole life. And I realized through them that, that Jesus had come to give me life and to give it abundantly to me and that he could, he could satisfy the longings that I had. And it was around that time that I, I trusted in him. And as I gave my life to him, I remember him slowly just beginning to, to help me become free from, from some of these things that for so long I had relied on. And I'm not sitting here saying that it got easy after I gave my life to Jesus because uh, it wasn't. And it was a struggle to become free from the sin that had entangled me for so long. But he was beside me. He was carrying me. Every time I'd fall, he'd pick me back up. And there were some things that, that he freed me from quicker. And it was almost like I just didn't wrestle with him anymore. But then there were some things like lust that had, has been a constant battle uh, and that off and on is a struggle and that I'm constantly relying on God to, to help me fight temptation. And the one thing I go back to all the time though is that no matter how many times I fall that Christ is there picking me up and, and renewing purpose in my life uh, and helping me realize that I'm no longer defined by the sin in my life but that I've been defined by what He did for me on the cross. As Jesus was freeing me from the different sin that was in my life, uh, my relationships did become deeper and they became more meaningful, mainly because it, they weren't about me anymore. For me, in order to overcome the sin that I'd struggled with for so long, I, ha I had to come to a point where I, I truly believed that Jesus had set me free from sin and that through trusting in Him, that He had given me a new identity. And so although I, I might struggle with sin, I'm no longer defined as a sinner, um, but as a child of God, as someone who has been rescued from sin, I be, was able to begin to fight my sin. And I was able to realize that, that God was fighting it with me. But one thing that, that became really clear to me as I was fighting my sin is that I needed people around me to help me with that. That there were gonna be times where I was gonna be tempted, or I was gonna fall. And the defining moment in my life was, was at the point that I realized that in those moments when I'm falling, that I've gotta have people that are picking me up. My name's Colby McGinnis and this is my story. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. For more information about our church or to watch other messages, you can go to our website at experiencelifenow.com. Let us know if we can serve you in any way, and we hope to see you real soon.